Two senators target emissions from coal-fired power plants, their new plan on how to cut those emissions. The California Bay Area will get the nation's first federally capped GHG emissions power plant. And new vehicle recalls, this time it's not Toyota, but one of the U.S. domestic automakers. From the Energy News Center in Washington, D.C., this is the Energy Report with Susan McGinnis. Good morning, I'm Lee Patrick Sullivan sitting in for Susan McGinnis. Thank you for joining us for the Energy Report this fifth day of February, 2010. Just do it. That was the message to the nation's coal plant operators yesterday. It came from two senators proposing a bill to make all plants install pollution control equipment. Delaware Democrat Tom Carper and Tennessee Republican Lamar Alexander want to amend the Clean Air Act and force older plants that had been grandfathered to now clean up their act. Alexander said there's no reason to continue the exemption. The bill would also toughen the Bush administration's Clean Air Interstate Rule, also known as CARE. The sulfur and nitrogen cap and trade program was thrown out by a federal court in 2008, but has been put back in place temporarily until EPA can come up with a new program. We, we have a number of different things to work out on, on carbon. As we, and from just my point of view, one of the differences is we, we, we still don't have commercially viable alternatives to, to producing 50 percent of our electricity from coal. The carbon sequestration technique for capturing carbon is limited and we haven't built a new nuclear plant in 30 years. So we can argue about how rapidly and in what way we should deal with carbon and we'll come to a result on that sometime. But there's no excuse for waiting a minute on SOX, NOx and mercury because we have the technology, we know what to do and we shouldn't be operating coal plants without pollution control equipment because of the effect it has on our health, on our jobs. Uh, and, and we should deal with that now. So there's no excuse for waiting on one when we know how to do the other three. In other energy news, a major California utility has the go-ahead from EPA to build the nation's first power plant with a federal limit on greenhouse gas emissions. Kelpine says it could begin construction this year on the 600 megawatt natural gas power plant in the Bay Area. The combined cycle power plant recycles the heat that other plants give off as waste. Kelpine volunteered to set the limits, but the state already tries to limit emissions by requiring utilities to buy electricity from plants whose emission levels are the same or lower than a typical gas-powered plant. Now, Kelpine's new project has angered some local residents who oppose its location. Some worry that hot air rising from the plant's stacks could interfere with flights into a local airport. Well, why Toyota grapples with braking problems on its Prius and Lexus models comes word that Ford is putting the brakes on its Fusion and Mercury Milan hybrids. Now, the company says it will fix more than 17,000 hybrids. The issue is with the regenerative braking system. Ford says a software glitch built on hybrids before October 17th could cause drivers to perceive a loss of braking. The motorist had noticed the cars wrongly shifting from regenerative braking into the normal mode after hitting potholes or bumps. The problem is restricted to hybrids which use regenerative braking that capture energy to help recharge the hybrid's battery. Now Ford says it will notify car owners when to bring their cars in for the software fix. Well, we're watching commodities markets again today. After big drops in yesterday's trading, the downward trend in oil continued today, with benchmark crude dropping below $73 a barrel in early trading. Analysts are blaming new overall concerns about the economy, especially in Europe. Right now, oil is trading at $73.24 on the NYMEX. That's up 10 cents. And the Henry Hub Natural Gas is $5.53 per thousand cubic feet. That is up 11 cents. Well, West Virginia's governor says he sees positive signs for his state's embattled coal industry. Joe Manchin told coal representatives at yesterday's 37th West Virginia Mining Symposium that his meeting with President Obama was, quote, an absolutely wonderful start to a dialogue about the future of coal. It was the first time he had spoken publicly about a meeting with the president and 10 other governors earlier this week. Now, Manchin also told reporters that he respectfully told the president, quote, the perception is the administration, administration does not realize the value of what coal and coal-fired energy has done for this country and will do, he said. Now, I'll continue that we agree that there's a transition. Yes, there is a transition over the next 20, 40 to 50 years. 
Now, the governor says he's convinced the president believes the country has to be a leader in clean energy or finding a fuel for the future. Now, one top climate scientist says this summer's Arctic ice melt could be a double whammy. The head of the U.S. National Snow and Ice Data Center, Mark Cerise, says the ice is growing slower than normal this winter about, at about a third of its normal pace, and what's there is thinner than usual. He says that could mean an early, fast ice melt later this summer and possible changes in seasonal weather patterns. All right, here's a look at the goings-ons around the Beltway at 11 a.m. The AMS continues its climate briefing series with a session on climate change and human health. There will be two sessions. The morning session starts at 11 at 210 Cannon, and the afternoon session starts at 2 p.m. in 406 Dirksen. And at 1230, President Obama speaks at a training center in Lanham, uh, Maryland. Also at 1230, Commerce Secretary Gary Locke delivers the closing keynote address at Retech 2010, the Renewable Energy Technology Expo. That's at the Washington Convention Center. And that's the Energy Report. Thank you for joining us in the Energy News Center. If you have any suggestions or comments regarding our programming here on Clean Skies New, we would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at cleanskies.com. And just a reminder, you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Lee Patrick Sullivan, and you're watching Clean Skies News.